Hello and welcome back to Cost Management. This week we'll be discussing transfer pricing. First topic, multinationals and transfer pricing. Some companies are fortunate to grow large enough that they have multiple divisions that feed into one another or own several companies, sometimes across several countries, that supply goods to one another. These integrated companies have several problems. Or should I say challenges? Let's go to challenges. One might be the tax authorities and governments are concerned with the prices companies use to, quote, sell themselves goods and services. Another could be managers in charge of divisions selling to each other have to be evaluated somehow, even though sales are all done or maybe mostly done or maybe just partially done internally. As well as managers need to be motivated to make decisions that align with the company wide objectives rather than just doing what's good for them. Well, transfer pricing is seen as the solution to the aforementioned problems. And yes, Transfer pricing research is robust and something that we will not be getting into the scope of the course. However, we will be introducing um, a base level, level of understanding, one that will be similar to and built upon in the CPA program. So for now, let's take a look at kind of how transfer pricing works and the problems that it aims to solve. So transfer prices are the selected prices that are used for operating divisions or subsidiaries and parents to sell goods and services to each other internally. These transfer prices allow the company to create a defensible transfer price for tax purposes. They also allow the company to set a price that motivates managers to work harder, as well as make decisions that are in line with the company objectives as a whole. When discussing the appropriateness of transfer pricing, it's important to have an understanding of the basic types of responsibility centers that a, company's, a company may use to determine how to evaluate an operating unit. Typically, a unit of a company is considered one of the following. A cost center, where a manager is responsible only for costs. A revenue center, where a manager is responsible only for revenues. A profit center, where a manager is responsible for both revenues and costs or an investment center, where a manager is responsible for revenues, costs, as well as investment decisions. In practice, it can sometimes be difficult to determine what type of responsibility center a particular unit of a company is. What is most important is remembering the key objective, which is to ensure that the center is motivated correctly and incentivized to make the decisions that align with the company's overall objectives. That is, maximize profit. Time for a question. You are the controller for a private company. The company produces bicycles and has two divisions. The first is the manufacturing department and the second is the assembly department. The manufacturing department makes tires, frames, and gears exclusively for the assembly department. By company policy, it is prohibited from selling to an outside customer. The responsibility center is most likely, is it A, a profit center, B, a cost center, C, a revenue center, or D, an investment center. Give it a try. If you said B, a cost center, you'd be correct. Since the division is unable to sell its product to outside customers, it means it realistically doesn't have control over its revenues. This means it cannot be a revenue center, profit center, or investment center, which leaves us with cost center which is intuitively appealing as the division appears to only be able to control its costs. All right, that's it for this first video. I'll see you in the next one.